Hey everybody, I'm Chris Bennett with the Storage Investor Show. Today's guest is Rick Beal from Atomic Storage Group. It's gonna be a great interview. We talk about operations, management, marketing, value, how owners can create value for their facility, and a lot more. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, let's bring in Rick. All right, I have Rick Beal here with Atomic Storage Group. I'm excited to have him on. We tried to work it out a few times, didn't work out, but we finally got it all nailed down, and uh, here he is. So Rick, let's get into a little bit, uh, let's just jump right in. Let's talk about your background in self-storage, uh, you know, your experience and what you're doing right now. So if you could share with folks uh, kind of the backstory and then what you're up to these days. Absolutely, man. It's been, what, six months we've been trying to do this thing? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. It's and finally, finally, native uh, nail something down and uh, get something on tape or That's digital right. tape, I guess. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> you can see my age right there. That's uh, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I've been in storage for probably gosh ten years or so, and I uh, I kind of have a unique story. When I started, uh, I started just as an associate. I walked into a storage facility that was brand new, and I said, "Hey, are you guys hiring?" I moved to an area, kind of did a life restart kind of thing. And they happened to be uh, hiring. And so I'm like, ah, great. So I started an associate and kind of learned the ropes there. And, you know, I was lucky enough to be part of uh, a really good group of people and a lot of really good mentors. And so I was able to just really grow. Uh, it was very small. You know, we had one store, one just opened up at the time. And uh, through that, I just learned, you know, everything I needed to go. I went there to be a manager. Uh, and then we just expanded. I became an owner, um, learned all about development, all about operations, uh, opened the third party management division in the company. And we went from those two locations to six, uh, just within a couple of years. And I was active in, in all those things. Um, and like I said, you know, I was just lucky enough to be part of people who were way smarter than I was, uh, which isn't hard. But I was just lucky to be along with part of the ride of that stuff. So awesome. I learned a lot of things from those guys. And they're probably some of the best in the industry. And, you know, I appreciate all the things I learned from them. And then I, I left there after, oh gosh, eight years, eight, nine years. Um, had a chance to speak a lot at ISS, SSA. I've written a ton of articles. Really enjoy the industry a lot. I enjoy helping people, helping owner operators learn more and just operate better. I left there and went to Easy Storage Solutions, uh, another great group of guys. Um, went there and started their third party management division, uh, which is kind of tricky because it was a software company and we wanted to open up an operations division. Uh, so I did that for a while and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not an office guy, uh, more of a get out, hands on kind of person. And so uh, I left that recently. And then I was approached by Matt Van Horn and Megan Smith, who have been friends of mine for a long, 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 long time. And we decided to form kind of a, a third-party management group, acquisition group, uh, called Atomic Storage Group. And so we formed that probably about two months from now, two months ago. And right now we just added a, another site in Maryland. I'm mean, heading off to Maryland next week to kind of get everything going with that. And that's kind of what we do now. And so that's, how my storage life has developed and that's kind of where I've come from. Okay. So in the atomic storage group stuff, you guys do consulting feasibility studies. Like talk about that for just a couple of minutes. What is that exactly? Absolutely. Guys? So, yeah. you know, my expertise is more on the operations stuff, more on the uh, employees management, uh, revenue management, operations stuff. That's my bread and butter. Uh, Matt does a fantastic job when it comes to feasibility studies, um, you know, structuring deals, Megan, you know, he's a CPA. She's phenomenal with numbers and, and, and structuring and all those things. So, you know, we're kind of like this, like, self storage Justice League that has come together, like Voltron has come together and put together <laughs> this great team. And um, it's great because we all, we all see storage in such a similar way yeah. and how it operates, which is, which is rare because we just think it's storage very differently than, than a lot of people out there. And so it's really good to, it's, it's, it's a breath of relief to find people who think of storage the exact same way, you know, more of a aggressive approach as opposed to a passive approach. You know, we always want to take the fight to them as opposed to waiting for people to bring business to us. Um, so it's, it's just been a fantastic team and we've had a blast so far. Plus we all get along great. So that's always good too. 
I mean, that's super, yes. Um, yeah. As long as you can get along with the people that you work with, they're great folks. I think that's a, that's a winning, that right there is like the first start, you know? And then obviously yeah. partnering up. I might do something sure. where I talk about partnering with people because I think it's so important. Uh, it's pretty tough to run a one-man show. You only have so much time in the day. And um, I mean, even if you can hire an assistant, that, that helps alleviate a ton of stuff. But if you have good partners who can complement, which is what it sounds like at Atomic, that you guys Absolutely. can complement each other uh, with your skills. And, yeah, uh, I couldn't do it without those guys. And, you know, you can only go so far by yourself. Yeah. And, you know, my, my feasibility knowledge, you know, it's, you know, 30% of what Matt's is. Yeah. So, you know, I couldn't give any clients, you know, any justice whatsoever. And I wouldn't want to, but, you know, that's what I have Matt here for. Okay, wonderful. Well, since you mentioned the operations side of things, I want to kind of get into some stuff uh, regarding operations, managers, marketing value. Now, I understand like not all of that is going to be in your wheelhouse, but you've been around long enough and have done some management stuff in the past. That I want to talk about, about it a little bit. So let's start off with the operations side of things. Um, how would you describe, like you, out, you, out, you go out and you do a site visit. Uh, how do you know when you see a facility that you know it's run really well operationally? Like what, what are kind of some of the clues that you look for uh, to be able to tell? Gosh, you know, it just starts very simply. You know, Matt and I had this conversation the other day. I mean, you can just look at one report, a management summary, and you can pick apart so many things in there. I mean, you can basically almost tell a story from a management summary. Uh, you can tell how well it's ran before you even go to a site. Um, it's, it's very interesting. But, you know, when you go to a site, you can see a lot of things. You know, are there homemade signs everywhere? You know, are there, you know, what everything looks at, looks like outside? Um, you know, what's the retail look like? Uh, you know, it's kind of the, the can, the curb, the cash register. You know, what, what does that stuff look like? Because if people aren't paying attention to the small things, they're not going to be, be paying attention to the big things. Um, so if you're not doing your, your everyday little things, you know, you're, you're missing four or five rentals a month. Uh, that's just going to happen. And so that's really, I mean, that's one of the reasons we named it Atomic is because the, the importance of details. The small little things that you put in very, every day makes the big things that everyone wants at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, it's the small things that happen that makes the big stuff. Okay. And that's what's important. I mean, it's, it's the day in and day out stuff. And so when that's not happening at a site, you know, you're, you're seeing a huge breakdown at the end of the month. It's, it's that one, you know, it's the one or two extra rentals that you could be getting if your phone script was a little bit better or if your sales script was just a little bit better or you just put that much more effort or that much more engagement you know, you can get two or three more rentals a month, which, you know, great, you get two or three more, but you multiply that over, you know, 12 months at a, a decent cap rate over the last four years or, you know, whatever, that's a big deal. And yeah. so a lot of those things are really important. Okay. You had mentioned, that's, that's good. Uh, you had, let's, let's talk about those two things real quick. So you mentioned the management summary. Uh, I know what you're talking about when you get one of the reports from SiteLink or where, whoever it comes yeah. from. Uh, what do you look for, like 80-20 rule, right? That's kind of like there's a few things that drive all the rest for the most part. Some of that detail in that management summary is kind of interesting, but maybe not the most important thing to look at in that moment when you first get it. What are some of the big things that you look at that help put together the story, as you mentioned, of uh, the facility? You know, it's really interesting. You know, obviously rentals are important, but it's not really, it doesn't really give you a full extent of what you have. I mean, you can have a horrible operator and just you're, you're doing great on rentals. But as you start to see things that correlate with each other, for example, you know, if you offer insurance, what's the insurance penetration rate versus rentals? So that kind of starts giving you a little snapshot of the skill level of the manager or whoever is in there. So okay. if I offer insurance, you know, I got, let's say 50 rentals and it was a busy month or whatever and my insurance penetration rate is, is 10, 20%, and that kind of gives me just a little sliver of ideas of what the manager's like. Um, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book a while back. I love that guy. Great, great set yeah. of hair, too. I'm yeah. really jealous. Yeah. I'm jealous of your hair, too, Chris. Oh, thank great you. Great set of hair, man. <laughs> 
That's um, so he wrote a book, I think called Something Blink, and he talks about how we make first impressions based on small slices of things, you know. And so when you take these first impressions of like a management summary, one of the things is that penetration rate. The other thing would be, another slice would be, uh, you know, retail. Um, if you offer retail and your, your, you know, retail per move-in is, you know, $5 per move-in, it, it kind of speaks a little bit more how engaged the manager is. Uh, accounts receivable is another one. Um, economic occupancy is another one. You know, all these little drivers, all those little slices of information gives you kind of an impression about how it's ran and how the manager is engaged in the facility. Uh, you know, those are all certain things that I look for just right off the bat uh, when I look at the management summary. Okay, so on the like economic sum, uh, occupancy, for example, so uh, there's physical and there's economic. Physical could be 90%, economic could be 75%. It just means that the amount of money that's actually brought in is less than the actual physical uh, number of people renting units. That's a Absolutely, quick back, yeah. back of the envelope explanation. People can look that up. But anyway, um, so if you see that there's a big disparity there in physical and economic, what is that telling you about the manager or even the owner, but the manager primarily there at the location, uh, how they're running their store? Yeah, you know, it's just, well, number one, maybe they're not educated. You know, revenue management, well, revenue management isn't hard, but it's something that you have to do continually. So maybe they're not educated. And they're not doing it in the right manner. And so, you know, someone needs to come in there and teach them how to do revenue management correctly and how to do it more and more. Um, just, just today, I saw a LinkedIn post um, regarding uh, close rates. Uh, they said, like, on average, this last year, we closed 90% of every one of our uh, inquiries. Well, that's great, but I don't want to close 90% of my inquiry, inquiries. I don't want that. You know, when, when I have you know, uh, maybe 10, 20 units left, those are going to be so high priced that I only want to close 25%. Of them. I don't want 90% of them. So those are the kind of conversations that you need to have with the manager that say, hey, you know what, we're, we need to fill up right now. And so our prices need to be, you know, somewhat here. Yeah. But as we start to fill up, you know, we're going to start raising our prices. And so it's okay to have lower closing rates. It's okay to close 30, 25% as we start to fill up because okay. we only need to fill three 10 by 10s. We don't need to fill, you know, 25. Okay. Um, so it's a very different way. You know, it's engaged the managers so they can start to think more um, as opposed to just having them warm the seat and take as they come in. Uh, I, I just really believe yeah. in that. We all do. Yeah, that's interesting you mentioned that because when I look at a management summary, I'll look at it from the income, NOI, you know, kind of trying to figure out the numbers and the, and the value of the facility itself. You mentioned some interesting stuff that obviously clues you into the person that's working there behind the counter, which I had never really thought about it from that perspective. You know, what is the story of this management summary? What's it telling me about the person working there? I look at it as the entire facility, but that encompasses obviously the person working there. So it's important. So that's really interesting. I just never had thought about it. Uh, I guess the light bulb never really went on in that clear way. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it's just kind of a different way of looking. It's just kind of, again, one of those small slices as you start to pick apart issues, possibilities of the facility. Yeah, that's, that's very good. You mentioned some of the small things and that was one of the questions that I had. Uh, what are some things that we can't get into an exhaustive list, but what are some things that are important that need to be done daily, weekly, and monthly to have an efficiently run uh, facility from an operations perspective? Does the owner need to look at the reports every day or once a week or once? Like, how, how do you guys uh, view that? What are some of those things that you need to do consistently to have a good facility? Yeah, you know, I have a very, I don't know, I think I have a very more uh, a trusting idea of what people should use. I know some people say, you know, managers do X, Y, Z, and, and that's it. That's, that's all they should do. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage managers and I want my managers to think better. Um, if I wanted people who didn't, I would just hire, you know, a, a call center and a kiosk to do all my work. Mm -hmm. um, I want my business to change. I want how I do business to be different a year from now. So I want people to find different ways to do things 
and to bring them to our business and to incorporate them. And so, okay. you know, other than the other the normal things we all know, you know, we need to be looking at reports. We need to be looking at our closing rates. That's huge for me because you need to be tracking those things. If you're not tracking those things, how in the heck are you going to figure that out? One of the, my big, you know, one of the things on Family Guy, when Peter says, you know what grinds my gears? This is, this is like my thing. What really grinds my gears is when, you know, I ask operators and managers, you know, what, what, how was your rentals this last week? Oh, it's, it's pretty good. Or I feel this, or, you know, I have an idea. You know, no, I'm not going to make business decisions based on a hunch or my gut feeling because, you know, I could have had Chinese food the night before. So, you know, I want my ideas and I want my decisions based on clear, measurable data. And so that has to be done by the manager. Like every single contact, every single email, everything needs to be tracked, period. Okay. No if and buts. That's kind of our religion too. Okay, so tracking everything that comes in, every inquiry, so that you can see your close rate. It's almost like building that funnel. How many people do we reach via marketing and then how do we when they do contact us, what, what happens after that? Absolutely. And what, what do you we know, do? If you do that, you're, you're, you're ahead of 80% of the facilities out there. Um, let alone if you follow up on it, uh, let alone if you can track, you know, how many people came in because of a, you know, a web, a web, uh, promotion we did mm -hmm. or something else. I mean, as you start to, to, to peel back the onion a little bit, there's so many great things that you can drive out of this data that you can decide where you're going to put your marketing dollars at, where you need to put staffing at, where you can build a new store. Um, you know, if you're starting to get all these in inquiries about storage and you're filling up, filling up, and you're still getting inquiries about storage, well, hey, that's that's great data. Yeah. That's data for you that no one else has. And so then you can start figuring, okay, so we're getting this much demand for storage. That means in this marketplace, they need more storage. So we need to consider where these people are coming and consider putting a, another location here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all these things come from your managers tracking this stuff every day. And if you don't have that, you know, what do you got? Your hunch? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to plop down an $8 million building based on a hunch. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. very good, man. That's very good. When you uh, let's switch gears real quick to uh, managers for a second. Yeah. When you, um, uh, again, if this isn't uh, completely in the wheelhouse, that's okay. But I want to just talk about it for a quick second. When you guys are looking for a manager or a manager to fill that that role, uh, how do you find these folks? Like, what kind of gives you an indication that someone might make a good manager? Given that you know they may not work out well in the end, but still on the front end, what do you kind of look for uh, in a potential manager for a site? Yeah. So there's five things. Their motivation, their work style, how they work, uh, their initiation, how they initiate things, uh, their collaboration, do they work well with others, and what are their thought processes. That's the five things I want in a manager. Um, that's what I want. And so those type of people are the, 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 the people who are going to bring their A games. You know, they're going to be motivated. Um, they're going to take initiative. If they see something, they're going to do it. Um, they're not just going to let it happen. Uh, you know, once they get educated about what, what's happening in the industry, once they get the knowledge, they're going to bring the information to you. Say, hey, you know what? I've noticed that our 10 by 10s have been closing really well. So I think we should raise the prices on this stuff. That's okay. the initiative that you have. And that's the thought process. So that's the five most important things I think you need to look for in the manager. Interesting. Okay. How do you, I've heard before that people will say, uh, you know, you can find good folks like that working in retail or hotels or whatever. Is that kind of the general way that uh, folks are founded? Do you do like online ads or how do you kind of find these people? You know, hiring for storage is ridiculous because no one wants to work in storage because it has such a bad connotation with it. You know, you think, you think of Martha, who's the old lady who smokes from her trachea and has a little poodle and the shag carpet in there. That's kind of the idea that people have yeah. with storage. Right. Right? And so right. when you put the ad on the newspaper, or not newspaper, oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> when you put the ad online, 
uh, censor that out. Just bleep it. People will think I swear, but just bleep it. <laughs> uh, when you put the uh, when you put the ad online and you put a you know really a you know we're a such and such company and we're looking for great people and all these things to be part of our storage. People see that and they're just bored. And so, you know, I've always really played with the ads a lot. And so it's really interesting. So I've, I've tried testing ads like an A test and B test. So I tried the more traditional ads, you know, more of, you know, we're a great facility. We're looking for people who do this, this, and this. And my success rate has just not been great. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to do a funner ad. And so I put something to the effect of, you know, storage right who wants to work here um let me tell you why these are the people who we're looking for we're looking for people who want to fail and learn from their success we're looking for people who want to try we're looking for people who are grown-ups who want to you know do stuff like that you know more of a hmm. people oriented ad as opposed to a job oriented ad and um you know kind of made it funny a little bit and stuff like that yeah. And when I swapped it and made it oriented toward the person as opposed to the job, my candidates just boom, right up. I mean, I got higher candidates, higher quality candidates. Every market that I've done this in, higher quality candidates. Um, I mean, you know, just a lot more longevity. Um, they've all worked out better. Uh, they've all, you know, they all fit my five criteria yeah. or been able to train them to get there um, every single time. That's great, man. That's I try cool. to recruit. It's hard yeah. because, you know, people either, number one, think you're kind of a creeper and try to hit on them. Yeah. So I bring my wife with me or my daughter and say, hey, you know, I'm not trying to hit on you. <laughs> um, but, you know, people have a job and then, you know, usually when you're trying to hire, you're, you're, you're hiring because you need to right now yeah. as opposed to you know a month from now and so uh, you know that's tough and yeah. so i i just really like changing the uh the ad to focus on the person as opposed to the job i like that man that's really Very good interesting when you try to yeah do that. it's a different psychological uh you're playing mind tricks on people like jedi mind tricks exactly, right that's it, man. <laughs> Mess with people's minds like, i can do that yeah i'm, a, I'm an adult I'm a dog. I can do that. I can do my name. <laughs> That's right, yeah. man. I'll take that job. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, did did you do the presentation at ISS on managers and how they can um, um, like get into the ownership type role or something like that? Was that you or I saw somewhere something that you had talked about that? Is that true or false? Um, maybe. Okay, <laughs> I thought I read. I thought I read something somewhere, but do you have, maybe do you have, well, let's talk about it for a second. Do you ever have managers that want, they look around, they, they're one of those folks that take initiative. They, they realize that kind of the light bulb comes on one day and says, you know, yeah. what? This is a great business. How can I get a piece of the pie and not just be an employee? You know, Absolutely. what kind of recommendations would you make for <coughs> managers who want to make that switch? Uh, switch isn't the right word, but want to make that step or take that step. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. so, you know, first of all, that was the, the um, kind of in my DNA that I've been passed off from my business experience. And I feel strongly that I feel strongly that if you have an employee who, you know, is with you, that kind of person that, you know, drives your business, um, you know, you, you make a lot because of that person. Um, I just, that's just my view of capitalism. Mm -hmm. That I think that, you know, there's plenty of money to go around. I mean, this storage pukes cash. I mean, this this business pukes cash. Yeah. You do it right. yeah. And there's plenty of money go around. And there's no reason that, you know, people can't be part of this. Mm -hmm. And so if you have the right person and if it's the right situation, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to give part of the ownership of the store to the manager or the district manager if mm -hmm. that position is right. Yeah. You know, you can give it in form of equity. Um, you know, they should be able to pay a little bit of it. But, you know, they should have ownership in that. I, I just feel strongly in that. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a bunch of reasons because of that. Um, you know, it, it gives them, you know, uh, something to work for. It, it keeps them with you. 
because you know if they're a star players and they have ownership in the skin in the game you know they're not going to go to a reit or go to somewhere else because they have ownership with with you yeah um so they're going to stay with you I, and fundamentally also it's just the right thing to do you know you're not giving them 50 percent but yeah. you're giving them you know you're you're giving them enough that it's just the right thing yeah um yeah, I just feel really strong with that. And if so, that we actually kind of started a similar program with Pump, uh, giving people equity as we start finding facilities and stuff like that. I just, we just feel strongly about that. Yeah, um, that's great, man. Just our yeah. personal philosophy. Yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way that you can motivate people in that sense to, to do well. If I own part of it, I'm going to hopefully treat it well. You yeah, know, right. Do right with it and, you know, do the right thing and not, not steal from the place and you know, stuff yeah. like that because I benefit if this thing benefits, if this facility. Yeah. So, it just, you know, yeah. it's just that whole silver, silver platter thing. You know, if you work for something, chances are you're probably going to care for it a lot more than just if it was just given to you. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to put a lot more into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, switch gears real quick to uh, marketing. Um, again, you have experience in this in this in the past what do you kind of recommend or how do you look view marketing these days because things have changed you know yeah. uh you mentioned newspapers i actually still get a newspaper every day i get the wall street journal delivered yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have a subscription that's online i never actually i take the newspaper and throw it in the trash right um, it's the only way you can get it uh you have to get the the actual thing. <laughs> it is kind of fun to get it on saturdays because it's a little thicker and it has like other stuff in there but yeah Total distraction. Sorry. How do you? What do you uh, recommend as like good ways, at least to to get the most bang for your buck in terms of marketing dollars? You know, I, I've looked at everything from uh, point A to point B when it comes to marketing. Um, even down to um, you know, I, I even for a second I even looked at uh, uh, television ads, which you know are obviously ridiculously ineffective. If you're, you know, in a, in a in a large marketplace, but these were ads that played, you know, locally, like in a like on Hulu, mm -hmm. or like on a Roku or something like that, because I just wanted to learn what was out there. Yeah. I think that's a lot. Also, just to be educated. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to marketing, I think the, the first first rule is you got to measure your marketing. So if you do a mailer, which might be fantastic what's the results of it you know always is the juice worth the squeeze mm -hmm. you know I, I know there's a there's a period where you just need to kind of build your brand and build awareness and stuff like that but you know we're in a business where it's a very need oriented business you may not need us on thursday but you might need us on on monday mm -hmm. and so you know is a mailer the best thing? i've done mailers before um but the point is you need to you need to track the success of the mail uh, you need to track the success of a, you know, SEO campaign. That's, you know, the key, key things. But you know, over a period of time, you start to see a lot of consistent data um, over sites that I've done, everything like this. You know, we typically, on average, in our site, we got five or six referrals a month after, you know, okay. over a few couple years, five or six referrals. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. So, you know, we made sure that was dealt with properly. <coughs> the second one is, you know, obviously your internet spend. I think your SEO thing is, you know, I think owner operators kind of look at SEO as kind of this, I don't know, kind of a redheaded stepchild yeah. that no one really knows what to do with, but he's part of the family anyways. <laughs> and so we got to like, he's got to be here, but be we don't really know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, no offense to any redheaded stepchilds out there that are listening to this. That's right. But I think the most important thing to do is educate yourself about what you're doing and what your marketing dollars are going to. You know, not I'm not saying that any of the companies are unethical or anything like that. I know all the guys in the industry, all the SEO companies, they're great companies. But it's really important to understand what and how to ask questions. Um, there's a lot of great resources out there. I actually went back to school and took two or three classes on digital marketing just so I could learn what questions to ask. 
<laughs> okay, that's interesting. Okay, it was just really important to me yeah. uh, because one people were saying that they were the you know number one Google person, and the other person was saying they're the number one Google person, and you know I, it was just confusing, and so I wanted to know. Um, but you know, be educated on what you're spending your money on. I mean, you know, you're educated in storage, hopefully. Um, yeah. you're, you're you're dumping you know I, I don't know eight nine a thousand dollars a month into your SEO spend, something like that. So you better be educated on what's happening there. Um, and then seeing the results of what's coming back and then trying things, see if this works better, see if that works better. Uh, the same thing with storage aggregators. Uh, you know, which one works better? I mean, does it work if you use an aggregator? Uh, does it not? But it's important to measure it. Uh, one of our sites uses storage aggregators and I want to turn it off next month to see the success versus non-success. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that in this site specifically, we would average about the same amount of rentals. Um, but you don't know until you can measure it. You don't know. Yeah. yeah. Until you try. Exactly. Stuff. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's so true, man. I mean, that's so true. Even this, even this stuff that I do, the videos and all that, I try things and change things you just don't know until you try and sometimes yeah, exactly. you get scared because you don't want to change something like, you know, like if you have, if you turned off your advertising in a certain uh channel or sphere or whatever you you're kind of afraid oh man i might lose out on some opportunities but then you won't know if you're actually wasting money there you know yeah if the same result would have happened if you didn't have it in the first place so it's crazy to see what you'll learn once you actually measure it and then go back and think about it um yep. it's much better than just dumping money into you know uh, endless hole. Yep, it's true. I know some people who just swear by aggregators. They don't try anything else, and like it works for them. And then other folks who do other things as well, and it seems to work for them too. So sometimes you just don't know what you like or what you want to do, yeah. how, how much time in the day you want to spend. And then a lot of times it also depends on your market. You know, we have yeah. two stores that were five miles apart, and for one market something worked, and then the other market the exact opposite works. Hmm. And it's crazy, five miles away from each other, and you would think the population would be somewhat similar, but they just weren't. Hmm. And so your tactics had to be totally different. Interesting. That's really yeah. good. That's really crazy. Good. Okay, that's really good. All right, real quick. Um, if we're gonna if we're gonna try to maximize the value, uh, if I'm an owner, I want to maximize the value of my facility. What are a couple of high things, high level things that you'd recommend uh, doing? Obviously, having a good manager in place. Uh, but what else, just off the top of your head? Uh, yeah, you know, I know you're probably not charging as much as you should. Um, you so know, raising, I, like raising your rates? Raising your rates. Okay. Um, but, you know, obviously, hey, you know, I'm going to sell my facility in a month. I'm going to raise my rates, you know, an extra 15%. Eh, yeah, you know, that's not, that's not going to work. That's not a very good plan. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> every budget that I do, I always budget for rate increases. You know, every year I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to raise my rates three or four percent, no matter what. Yep. And, you know, obviously, you know, I mean, if the market calls for it, I'm not just going to be, you know, stubborn and say it's in my budget. I'm raising my rates. But it's in my budget to remind me and say, hey, you know what? Three percent. We've got to do it because it's in there. You know, oftentimes people just, you know, and the year goes by, year goes by and, you know, six years down the road you could have made up a lot of space. So that's, yeah. <coughs> excuse me. That's the first thing you got to do is, you know, have a strategy when it comes to your revenue manager. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, you can do a lot of little things over the period of time, but that's the most important thing is having a strategy for your revenue management. Um, you know, it's that, you know, a dollar more, $2 more in that five by 10, uh, one year, then the next year, then the next year, then the next year. You yeah. know, really pushing your rates and tracking them. Because over a five, ten year period of time, because, you know, storage is the business of inches and not miles. That's mm -hmm. that's the business we're in. Yeah. As you start to make those inches along the way, um, when you go to sell your property, you're going to maximize that revenue because you, you, know, you planted that seed five, six years ago and you're going to be able to reap the harvest down the road. Yep. Um, yep. That's going to be your big mover right there. That's really um, good. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd agree. Like raising rates is going to be the biggest thing because so many people don't do it. And then they want to go and sell and say, oh, well, you can raise rates, and but I haven't done it. Yeah. 
10 years. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Good practices along the way. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, just very clear, you know, preparation fees, um, uh, insurance, you know, just good practices that you would think are just like storage one oh one. Yeah. Um, but just aren't. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you know, it's just, it, it's crazy sometimes how, you know, when I go into some of these facilities and, and people who should know better, who don't, um, you know, I so, know some very high end operators who don't charge a preparation fee. Uh, you know, they also don't give their employees insurance or whatever. I'm like, yeah, charge $15 and give your employees insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just, that's a no brainer to me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these little things, like I said, over a period of time add up. And that's they're going right. to create value for your facility. That's right. That's right. <coughs> Appreciate that. All right. Let's get into uh, three quick questions. I want to try and start asking uh, everybody who comes on the show. Sure. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, what's the uh, best deal or best, um, I guess, maybe management situation that you've ever uh, been involved in? Best deal. Best deal? Yeah. Or management situation? Yeah. Oh, gosh. <sighs> so... Um, and this is an interesting one. We had a great site in Salt Lake City. Um, a fantastic deal. Probably the highest rates in all of Utah. And we had about 700 units in there. And that thing was an amazing facility. It, gorgeous facility. Gorgeous everything. <coughs> and, you know, rates were amazing. And we were just pushing rates every single year consistently. Really? Uh, when that thing eventually sells, it's going to be a, a great Great site. Good situation. Uh, yeah. Funny thing about that is uh, they're just uh, two competitors are building two blocks away. Back-to-back -back storage facilities are building right by each other. That's funny. So that, that deal could be hit pretty hard. Yeah. Very tricky. <laughs> yeah. The worst deal. I was going to say, so then what's the worst uh, situation management-wise, ownership-wise you've been involved in? Yeah. Um, so management, there's a facility that, I, that we manage that I know. Um, wasn't quite my ideal place. We kind of suggested to the owner, I wouldn't quite build here. Um, <clears throat> it was open for quite a few months and it was struggling for rentals. I mean, we tried everything to stick against the wall for marketing and it was not working. <coughs> mm. And it was because it was a poor location. Um, I mean, it was, there were, there were cows around, there were deers around, deer around. Uh, oh, wow. which isn't a good sign to put storage no. in, especially no. when you're popping down a, you know, $6 billion facility. Um, that is a bad situation and, you know, not a situation that I'm glad I'm not involved in. That would probably be one of the worst that I've seen. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Word of caution to folks out there. So yeah, once yeah. you put them down, you can't move it. Right. <laughs> That'd be nice if you could, but yeah, yeah. Wow, that's really good. That's good to think about. Uh, last question, best uh, or highly recommended business book uh, that you've read? Oh my gosh. Oh, can I show you it? Yeah. All right. So this is my, I got my bookshelf over here. I have like a thousand books. I love reading business books, leadership books. Love it. Yeah. So, you know, you just, you just basically open Pandora's box. Okay. So. <laughs> Here he goes. Rick's coming back. All right. Back. Back. All right. So two of them I would recommend. I always pass this book out, like whenever I speak. It's a, Power it's a of habit. Okay. Power of habits. Um, I'm really it's very, very much a uh, you know, an idea of doing the small things and yep. developing the habits are the most important thing. Yep. And because I'm talking right now, I'm gonna throw in the second one. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Atomic oh, habits. <that's> hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Number one, because it has an awesome name of a yep. comic. Yep. This is what we're actually going to start giving people because it's a great book. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the main idea of Atomic Habits is just those, you know, again, those very small things that you do every day are going to pay off dividends at the end of the time. And it's, it's forming those habits. And the biggest thing that I take away from this, if you want to make things easier, you know, reduce the friction. So make your life easier. Yep. Form those habits. Two That's favorite books right there. Pull them up again, real quick. I want to see the author. All right, yeah, absolutely. I didn't see the authors. Oh, glare. Okay. A little bit higher. There we go. There we go. Okay, James Clear. There we go. James Clear. Yep, Atomic Habits. Atomic Fantastic Habits. Book. And then I the recommend one. it. 
And then Charles, uh, I can't really pronounce his last name. Duhigg. Duhigg. <laughs> yeah. Duhigg. Awesome. Sorry, Charles. 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 If we, we slide you, your name. Sorry. <laughs> we, love we love you. Wrote a good book. Oh, call me Charles. Charles and we'll talk about your last name. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. Awesome. Well, I'm sure he'll, he will appreciate the uh, love we're showing him. So, right. right, man. Thank you, Rick, so much for being on. How can people reach out to you guys? Uh, to you at the Atomic Storage Group and uh, get in contact with you guys. Absolutely. So our website, um, AtomicStorageGroup.com, and follow me on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn uh, backslash Storage Rick, or just look me up on LinkedIn. I love my LinkedIn groups, and I post on there regularly about leadership and storage and all sorts of good stuff. So awesome. please follow me. It's a blast. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Rick, thank you for being on and sharing your stories and your insight. Uh, with all things management, ownership, yeah. marketing, uh, operations, everything that you talked about, man, it's been really, really good. So I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. I had a blast. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. We'll talk again. Yeah. All right. That was Rick Beal from the Atomic Storage Group. His contact info and website will be in the description for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys got a lot of value out of that. Uh, reach out with any comments, questions. I do read them all. I'm Chris with the Storage Investor Show, and I'll talk to you soon.